Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry and today we have another episode of Thursday's Tabletop Tangent, where I basically choose a topic board game related, related to the board gaming hobby, and I just go on a rant and share all my thoughts about that topic. Today we're going to be talking about Finding people to game with. It is the challenge. It is the thorn in the side, the plague that we gamers sometimes have to suffer, right? Have to suffer through. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted up a video of TTT, Thursday's Table Talk Tangent, where I talked about why the board gaming hobby, in my opinion, makes for a better hobby than sports the watching of sports, or movie watching. And I gave a detailed list as to my arguments why I believe that is so. Now, one of the more common responses that I got from people on different platforms and including people in my own personal life, one of the common responses to that is, well, these are hobbies that we can do independently, that we can engage in whenever we want because we don't need uh, other people to engage us engage in it with us and that's not necessarily true for board gaming right you do have solitaire and lots of solo games and more and more games and game designers and publishing companies are focusing on the solo experience on including some sort of official solo variant to a game and many older games that don't necessarily have a solo mode have some sort of fan-made or user-made solo variant that you can find on bgg.com, boardgamegeek.com, and many of these solo variants are very functional and and very, very, you know, creative and, and work. However, most games, for the most part, you do need a second, third, sometimes even fourth and fifth player for it to be optimal or even functional. So... It is something that we have to worry about. You do, for the most part, have to find people to game with to sustain this hobby, right? Um, so I will talk about that struggle and some of the things that you can do, uh, the options that you can do to like meet that demand or that requirement of finding gamers. Now, one of the things that a person could do is they can go and they could use the BGG user search on um, boardgamegeek.com. It's a feature there where you can search, you type in your zip code and it shows BGG users, registered users, members of the site who live somewhere within 20 miles or so of your zip code. I think you can uh, specify the parameters there. I think you can make it for more than 20 miles. So whatever distance it is that you feel comfortable traveling, you can find other board game geek users who are within that area now you may or may not have a board game geek account and you may not want to go through the trouble of creating one even though it's pretty easy it's a free it's a free account um you could just you know type in your profile information and basically start an account but not only this i will say i've tried the bgg user search and it didn't work when i first got into the hobby I was desperate to find people to play with, and I was really, really excited. Um, so I got on, and I would look at people who um, were near my area, and I found that a, a lot of the accounts were inactive accounts. They were people who had not logged in in a very long time, like sometimes years. So it made me wonder, because that's the thing, you know, they kind of don't clean that up there, right? So even though there's tons of users on BGG, BoardGameGeek.com, lots of those users are inactive users, right? Inactive accounts that have not been used. So I, I sent some messages out to some of these people, and I never heard back from them. And because of that, you know, I kind of got turned off from that approach. Mind you, a couple years later, I had a BGG user... Um reach out to me and tell me that they lived near the area and that they would like to game. And I was like, hey, man, that sounds really, really exciting. Let's let's make it happen. You know, let's schedule something. And I never heard back from this user after that. And that was a little bit disappointing. So that was the BGG user search option. Now let's talk about Meetup. Meetup is another 
popular thing. I mean, people use Meetup. Meetup is an app or a website, actually. They have an app for it where you can search people who have common interests, who are interested in your niche and your hobby, and you can find them based on geographical location and start up, start different groups, meetup groups, where people can join and so on and so forth. And you can start your own group. Now, I actually used meetup.com and I created a board game group for my area in Queens. When my wife and I used to live in Queens, we no longer live there. And I had, I created a couple events and I got a couple of people to join. I got a good amount of people to actually join the meetup group. And I got people, even though I got a good amount to join the meetup group, I didn't get as many people to RSVP to the actual events that I would plan. I, I was trying to plan a monthly game night just to ease our way in. And what would happen is I would get a couple of RSVPs. So even though there was like 20 members on the meetup, I would get like maybe three, four RSVPs. And then our first event came up. And none of the people who RSVP'd came. So I was like, I'm not going to give up. We scheduled a second event. And for our second event, we had, again, we had like three or four people RSVP. And only one person came. Tom from Queens. He lives in Flushing. Tom, if you're watching, thank you for coming. I know, I remember two things about Tom. I remember his name and I remember that his favorite game of all time is... Orleans and um, we had a really good time playing I, it was really cool meeting Tom and meeting a gamer who who loves to to play you know designer games and has a collection of his own and so on and so forth and Tom came in it was great we played some games me and him he joined my wife joined us for a few three-player games and we had a great time then we planned the third event and um, you know, again, a couple RSVPs, and again, Tom was the only person that came. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm done with this meetup thing. You know, uh, I didn't quit officially for a few more months, but then we eventually moved out of Queens, moved to New Jersey, which is where we currently live. And I was just like, okay, I officially went into the meetup account and closed it, and it was done. So meetup did not work. Some people, when they want to find gamers, they go to the local friendly a brick and mortar board game store and lots of these board game stores have events they have game nights they have tournaments and so on and so forth and you get to meet people who play the game now this is a great alternative it's a great option i think it works more when you have the independence and freedom to do so i don't necessarily have that independence here in my house uh i am a father of two children of ages four and one about to be two years old uh, my son is a special needs child on the autistic spectrum, and I am a stay-at-home daddy where my wife goes to work, makes the money, and because of that, a lot of the parenting responsibility falls on me, and again, with a special needs child, there's a lot to be required. It's a very demanding responsibility, and because of that, honestly speaking, I don't have the freedom to leave my house as often as maybe some other people do. Um, and I'm okay with that. So because of that, going to a board game store and joining a game group there is not really an option for me. So even though it's a great option for many other people, it's not really an option for me. So I have not had that option. But I will say this, and this is kind of the heart of where I'm going on with this tangent here. I feel that everybody has people right underneath their nose who they can game with. And that's kind of been my experience. I've been gaming with the people right underneath my nose. And I didn't realize that very, very early on, but little by little as I progressed as a gamer, I, it started clicking with me and I started figuring out that I can have a very solid and healthy board gaming diet, even being surrounded by non-gamers and casual gamers at best and that's what I've done I've looked at people who I love people who I love spending time with because those two are not necessarily the same sometimes you could really 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 love a person but you love them at a distance or you don't necessarily love spending time with them because the relationship is just dysfunctional or toxic or whatever but you have that special fondness or love because of how long you've been in a relationship with them maybe they're a relative or whatever so you got to find the people you love and the people you love 
to spend time with, people that you find to be exciting and 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 fun and people that have create exhilarating laugh out loud moments with you in all types of settings and say, hey, let's try a game. And I kind of basically discipled so many people from early stages of playing lots of gateway games, right? Lots of gateway games were played, um, probably more than I would have naturally if I would have had been surrounded by more gamers. And it's one of the reasons why I have a very great appreciation for lots of gateway games that lots of gamers tend to move on because of how much I play them and how much replayability I found that they actually do have. So play lots of gateway games and kind of graduated everybody. So some of the people I play with, obviously my wife, and it's really been the last two years that we've really, really played. My first year, year and a half as a gamer, we played here and there. Mostly she joined for group games and party games and things like that. I also played with my cousin Rodney. He was one of the first people. My cousin Rodney and I, we've been playing games forever since we were very, very young. But you know, lots of it was mass market games and they didn't get played with the same frequency. A few years ago when I got into Catan, we started playing lots of Catan. We started playing lots of Risk and so on and so forth. Then we started playing lots of Marvel Legendary and DC deck building. And then I really got immersed into the hobby and we started playing lots of games. And he was the first person. We don't play with as great a frequency as we did before, but we still, before this epidemic, this pandemic, we still try to get together about once a month and just have a really big game night where we play like six or seven games. And it and it's a blast. And um, again, even though to some extent he's a casual gamer, doesn't really have a collection of his own, doesn't really uh, follow you know the hobby intensely as I do, but he's a really you know, excited, casual gamer. He loves to play. He loves to learn new games. You know, I've worked on that with him. He's the person I play with. I also play with a good friend of mine named Andrew. We try to get together a couple times a month for some really big game nights. A person that I've always had a good time playing with. We actually went to college together. We used to play some games then. Of course, there were some mass market games. We played, uh, we actually went to grad school together or, or, or yeah. We went to grad school together, and we played some really good games uh, there as well. Like We've always had a history of playing games together. And then when I got into the hobby, I was like, hey, let's continue playing games together. But these more advanced games there. And um, it's been really, really cool playing with him. My nephews and my niece, you know, I game with them quite often. We, we used to game every week, and it was fun. It was long sessions of game nights. And... You know, I've been playing with them since they were very, very little. Now they're big. You know, my niece is 12 years old. My nephews are 18 and 20, grown men. And we've been playing since they were very, very little. And now we continue to play again. But now with my more immersed gaming hobby and playing with them, getting them through some gateway games and then some meteor, more advanced games. So all of those people combined are the reason why I've been able to play so many games so many times and have such a much more active, you know, gaming lifestyle than lots of other gamers who actually even have, you know, official board game groups that they belong to because it's no one person that I depend on in order to get my gaming in. I actually depend on a community of different people who were already a you know, intricate part of my life before I was in the board game hobby. And I feel like all of you out there can do that as well. You know, you have some really, really good friends or some really close family members who you just have a fondness, not only for them, but for the moments shared with them, for the time spent with them. You have nostalgia, you have great memories, but you feel, hey, they're not a real gamer or they're not into gaming as much as you. And that's probably going to be true even after you expose them to the world of gaming and that's okay first of all if they love you enough to indulge you in the occasional game that's awesome and if they're into it enough that they're like hey i like this i don't want to buy my own games but i'll play your games with you that's awesome too you know and yes you're gonna have to suck it up to some extent early on playing lots of gateway games and for some people Playing a gateway game for some gamers is torture, right? It's like unbearable, but I think it's a worthwhile process. I mean, I still like playing gateway games. It's not like once I graduate, 
you know, the people I game with past gateway games. It's not like I never go back and revert to gateway games. They serve they their they serve their purpose and their time. Um but if you don't, that's fine. Just graduate them and eventually move them on to meatier things. Most casual gamers might never get into some really, really heavy games, but they can learn to appreciate some of the medium light to medium heavy games, and you can get those games played with them. So Again, I truly believe that there are people that you could game with right underneath your nose that you've never even thought about. Think it through. Who knows who it might be? And again, collectively, those people add up. You know, there might not be any one person in your life who's going to game with you often enough, you know, in the course of a month, in the course of a year, for you to be tr truly satisf satisfied. But if you can find two, three, four people and mix and match them then you can have it you know another thing is sometimes i you know i like to play a lot i play a lot of two-player games because of that most of my group gaming is played with my nephews and niece but every once in a while i'll take two or three of my individual friends you know my cousin rodney my friend junior my friend uh andrew my friend wayne i'll take a couple of these guys and say hey let's get together two of two, uh, two or three of us let's get together four of us and let's just play these multiplayer games that need a bigger player count. So anyways, that's it for my tangent. I know a lot of it was disorderly and out of context maybe, but that's exactly the point of a tangent. Just wanted to share how I feel about finding gamers, the struggle, some alternatives that have worked for me, some of the things that sound like good ideas and might work for other people, but have not worked for me. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Thursday's Tabletop Tangent. Thank you so much for joining us here at When Harry Met Board Games. Don't forget to smash that like button down below and subscribe to our channel. It's not just about tangents. We do lots of neat and interesting things here on this channel. So please subscribe. Give us some support. Show us some love. Well, this is Harry saying take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.